While some people spend hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars on flights annually, others opt for a different kind of high. And yes, we are talking about cannabis. Cannabis, commonly referred to as marijuana, weed, or pot, is the most commonly used illegal drug in the United States and Canada. In fact, more than 44% of Canadians say they have used it at least once in their lifetime, and 33% have used it more than once. Cannabis is not new. It has been used since the New Stone Age as a source of food, medicine, oil, and used recreationally for, well, getting high. So what is it about this little green plant that attracts so many people to it? The popularity of cannabis can be attributed to relatively easy access, the underestimation of perceived harm, and the strong feelings of euphoria that most people experience when using cannabis. When used recreationally, the desired effects are usually the stereotyped feelings of elation and relaxation, commonly referred to as getting high. The legalization of cannabis for recreational use is currently a heavily disputed topic and is met with criticism concerning the potential harm that is often associated with cannabis use. To further complicate this debate, the idea of using cannabis for medicinal purposes creates new grounds for its legalization. So, where do we stand today? Is cannabis just a plant or is it a drug? And how effective is medicinal cannabis? And are there any long-term side effects? Although cannabis is derived from a naturally occurring plant, it's important to note that it contains several psychoactive ingredients that interact with our brains and temporarily impair cognitive function. These include over 60 different cannabinoids, which are chemical compounds that act on cannabinoid receptors in our brains. The two most common cannabinoids are THC and CBD. Tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, is the major psychoactive ingredient in cannabis that is responsible for the feelings of euphoria, while cannabis oil, or CBD, has different psychoactive properties. Although THC and CBD are both cannabinoids, they interact differently with cannabinoid receptors. THC can induce elation and relaxation in some people, but it can also cause anxiety and panic reactions. CBD, on the other hand, has been shown to have anxiety-reducing properties and in some cases can even antagonize the effects of THC depending on the dose and time of exposure. For this reason, cannabis plants are bred to have different THC to CBD levels. Since the purpose of medicinal cannabis is to exploit the therapeutic properties of the plant without experiencing the inebriation effects that THC is known to induce, the antipsychotic and anxiety-reducing properties of CBD make it a better candidate than THC when used for medicinal purposes. The idea of using cannabis for medicinal purposes isn't new, and research is constantly uncovering its potential therapeutic properties. The diverse properties of cannabis allow it to be used alongside treatment for a multitude of illnesses, including anorexia and bulimia nervosa, multiple neurodegenerative disorders, cancer, and many more. One of the most common ways that cannabis is used is to induce analgesia in patients struggling with chronic pain. It is a common belief that cannabis has pain-reducing properties, and for that reason, it is sometimes used alongside invasive treatments that have severe side effects. In these cases, cannabis is not used to treat the conditions, but to rather help with the management of pain. But how effective is cannabis in alleviating pain? A study by Campbell et al. examined the effectiveness of using cannabis to reduce pain and found that it was no more effective than codeine and had depressant effects on the central nervous system that restricted its use. However, the number of clinical trials are currently limited and more work needs to be done to assess the effectiveness of using cannabis in pain reduction. In addition to pain management, there has been a lot of media coverage concerning the therapeutic effects of cannabis in treating various neurological diseases. So how does cannabis measure up to these promising headlines? Well, Kabbal Eyal conducted a systematic review concerning the efficacy of medicinal cannabis in several neurological disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, Tourette's syndrome, Huntington's disease, and epilepsy. The researchers evaluated the results from 34 different studies, which all failed to find conclusive or statistically significant results in favor of using cannabis. Another area of research that medicinal cannabis has gained attention in is cancer treatment. When used in cancer patients, Cannabis is effective in the management of symptoms such as anorexia, chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, insomnia, and depression. And although it is less potent than antiemetics in preventing vomiting, it is the only antiemetic that also increases appetite. In addition to managing symptoms, there is increasing evidence both in vitro and in animal models supporting the effectiveness of the direct anti-cancer effects of cannabis. Although clinical trials are currently limited, There are plenty of case studies showing patients responding positively to cannabis as an anti-cancer treatment. 
This, however, is not a good indicator of cannabis as a potent anti-cancer agent, as more properly controlled clinical studies need to be conducted before determining its efficacy. Despite the potential therapeutic benefits of cannabis, we have to acknowledge the possible adverse side effects that come with recreational use. According to the literature, the two most important risk factors are age and frequency of use. There is clear evidence suggesting that long-term cannabis use can lead to addiction, and this percentage increases if used frequently or if individuals start using cannabis in their teens. It has also been well documented in many studies that individuals who smoke cannabis in adolescence had fewer fibers in specific brain regions that are involved in learning and memory. It should be noted that the symptoms mentioned above are not an exhaustive list of all the documented adverse side effects. Although there are still gaps in our knowledge regarding the full potential of cannabis for medicinal purposes and the adverse side effects that come with long-term use, cannabis remains a promising yet controversial drug 